All right, well look, what I've decided is this, that this is a little follow on from the one I've just done for you previously, which is the Statue of Liberty. And I finished it in the watercolor paint. And what is a good idea is to let it dry. Step away, see what you think. But what I thought I might do was what I do call the polishing up part of it. You don't always have to do it and sometimes it's not needed, but I thought I'd show you what I do if I do polish up a sketch like this. Now, I'm looking at it, I thought I might just bring up a little bit more of the dark around the face and so on and so forth, but guess what I use for that? I don't use paint, not always. Why would you go back to the paint? That's all dry and it's nicely done. So what I do, you may be able to see all my acryl pencils here. They're the same colours as the palette. That's the way it's designed. So you've got the same colours. You've got one less blue, but that's all right. We can manage with that. So what I tend to do is I then I have them all lined up. I've got my Posca pen because I may throw a bit of that in. Who knows? China graph occasionally can be used in a slightly different way from what you think. You can actually go back on things and soften edges, although I don't do that often, but it does have that double use. But what I thought I might do is I'm going to go in with the hooker's green. I'll probably use a little bit of this and I'm very inclined to use a bit of the warm red as well. So let's see if I can just polish up, strengthen up some of the color on the face. Now I tend to keep them quite sharp. If you have this sharp enough, I think I've got it slightly out of order here. That's the wrong bit, but the bit that I, <laughs> trust me, not find it. If you've got this one, Sharpen up in this hole here, not that one. That's for your China graph. This one's for your pencils, and that gives you a nice long length. I like long length because I'm going to use it sideways. If you recall, I do hold them in a slightly funny way, which is that. So here's what I'm going to do. Now I thought I'd do the green. First of all, I'm going to go round underneath the chin. I'm just going to push in, and you'll start to see that I can actually darken quite a lot. What's going on there? I just go around here. And I'll be putting a bit of blue over that. I'll just go up under here, down to there. You'll start to see it. I can actually start to pull up perhaps some of those creases where the fabric, the metal folds are. This, the metal that this is made of actually is copper. This was a statue that was actually partly built by he fell, the same fellow that did the tower. And this statue was the Light of Liberty. It was a gift to the American people from the French people, which is quite wonderful, really. I don't know if they would, um, who knows if they'd do it now or not, the way things are. But there, look, I've started to darken it up. I might put a little bit in here as well. And I'm going to now come in with my blue, which will be this one. And I generally would be working down the center. You might lose the top of that lovely little point, but that's right. I'm very fond of putting in a little bit of dark around the cheekbones. She doesn't have lipstick, but I can't put lipstick on her, even though I'm always tempted to. You know, I love the pink cheeks and the lipstick. But I won't. I'll hold back. That might be going one too far. Now I'm just going down here a little more into those folds. Now I'm tipping the pencil up. What I tend to use this way when I'm just covering vast expanses, but I'll tip it up so that I'm just using a point and I can put it into little areas that I can want to get into with just a small amount of colour. I don't want too much of it. You're kind of looking at it and just working it as you see it. What does it look like to you? Are you happy with what you're seeing? I think I am. And I'll go in there. What's one good thing about it is that quail will go back if you've got too much China graph. You can actually get in over it or just go straight over it, which suits me there because I'll go back up against the, the body, the fold of the body as it goes around. Down we go, but down here. Might just go back there. Now I'm using the side of it and just doing a very gentle scroll. Just be cautious. This is not really 
needing a lot but just to get a bit more drama into the colours of it because there's a lot of light and dark on this and you can just come in around there and then out I might just go back in with a little more green around that centre what I would really love to do is put a red flame on top, but nope, I must hold back. There wasn't any other colour. It is a flame. This is the light of liberty. So I've just got to be a little controlled for a change. Now I am going to put a bit of red in because what I tend to do is these two colours here, I use as a black. I tend not to use, I don't even think I had any black in there. I use these as my black. So if I put some red on top of that, you'll see that it does make quite a deep, it's a deep rich purple and you can use a bit more red or a bit more black just to get a bit of drama into there coming up. You can put lines in and just fade them off and I'm going back in under that jawline there because there's quite a lot of depth where the head and the neck come in against the the outfit she's wearing. I want to go in there a bit more. I think she's getting some real depth in there now. Might come down in there. I want to keep to the center a bit. It's very tempting to go right to the edges and this is what we tend to do. We go, oh, I've got to go out to there. Then it's all what I call monocolor. It's all the same from one side to the other. My little philosophy is really that I try to change color every millimeter just about. Might be the same colour, but you can use it lighter or darker just to emphasise things. Yeah, I think we're coming there. We're good and going good. Going good. Down we go. A bit more down here. It's a little darker as it gets down here because I think the light is slightly less than it might have been. I'll go in there. That fold, I'll really actually something more with that fold. Whether I can achieve that or not is an interesting one. Not to worry. All right, now I'm going to put a little more red around this area here. Interesting that it was a copper originally. I guess that's why it's all green now. That's what the copper does. So along here, what I think I might do is I'm missing a little bit of the lighting underneath there. This is tricky because I would normally put the book sideways, but you might not understand what I'm doing if I do that. Just going underneath there, because that's that sits out on that building a little bit. Same on here. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you. It really doesn't matter if you um, don't stick to the lines very well. And there's a third one down the bottom here too. Down here. All the way. Don't have to go all the way, but I have. So I better keep being consistent with that. Now I'm going to go back in with the red, and you'll see the black occurring. It gives it such life. It just just gives it a sense of density. I just, oh, must have lost a bit of battery here. <laughs> Don't know if we can keep going. Let's try. My lighting system has failed with the whole. The lighting. This is the lighting. Right, and I will actually go in with that little doorway that's down there a little darker. I might like put some red on that. I don't need to do a lot, it just seemed to me needed a bit more punch. Now, what I would also like to do is I'm going to introduce a bit of yellow. A bit more into this tree because what I by stepping away you start to see things I realized that the green of the trees was identical to the green of the sculpture so I went, oh that shouldn't be I've got to make that change so I've just made a slightly different green down here even though I've kept all the colors as they were and the other thing I quite like to do is this I go in a bit more around the object I couldn't do it earlier because the paint was really wet and I was trying to avoid having a complete dribble of colour coming down so I can use that ultra sorry cerulean which is exactly the same as the paint now I can bring it up to the boat around there 
and I can even press a little harder because I'm very fond of having the obstacle itself outlined a bit more over here. And you'll see here that the cerulean is coming in where I had white or I left white. I'll push quite hard actually. You can just about break your wrist getting it as hard as you want. Get some more colour going in there. Bit more there, bit more there. Even a bit more now. The thing is, I also realised earlier that this area here is part of this, so I might just run a little bit more warm red, just so that we are aware it's part of that plinth, massive plinth on this building. Uh, you're not really seeing much past there, so we'll just improvise there. A bit more red in that door, I think. And then another thing I like, quite like to do is this. I like this depth of here. I like to go quite hard against the white area. I pick out those little corners like that curve there. I'll go in there and I'll just rub it in there a bit, maybe in here. This is a really good trick. If you really think it's lacking pop or punch, look for a white area such as that and then go very hard up against it. Just pick a few areas, not all of them. You don't need to do everything or you'll lose that nice kind of abandonment almost, you know. So I'm coming in here as well. Push, push, push. Tip up, it gets a little blunt, but that's all right. So far, so good. Otherwise, you do have to stop and go back to get your sharpened pencil. Because it's not good working on wood. You're not getting the effect at all. I might come up to here, there's a little area that I can push in. Yeah. Looking good. Maybe I can actually now get right, right up against the hand in the book. Give it a bit more emphasis. That. There are her fingers holding the book. Down there. I really work by just, my eye is constantly searching, where do I want colour, where do I think it needs it? So I'm looking up and down pretty much all the time, I might smooth that out, just to see if I've got the balance. Is it, is it looking as though one end's a bit soft or the other end might be not? I'm matching it up, but also the trick I think is to make sure that it's all done in the same style it's very easy at times to concentrate too much on one section and it doesn't necessarily look like it was done by the same person. It changes style if you spend a lot of time, say, on a face or some detail. I'm really working to make sure that everything gets the same kind of concentration of colour and I might go around there a bit. I didn't want to go right up the top because it's quite a tall, skinny sketch now. I didn't want to go far, much further up. I like that little yellow that came into there. It's, these are the little things I quite like. What else would I do? I might go into these windows. Now that I've got more dark here, this one can take a little more, if you can still see it, that is. All right. Okay. Let's just have a look at where I might put some poster pen. This one doesn't need very much, so I was just going to show you. Might be a couple of places that we could do it. I think it's working. I might even say do into those. Hopefully you can see that. If I think those little pointy bits need a bit more, I can go around there. Around there, around there, and even just a little more around there if I want. It's quite clever. I might even, even, even. No, I won't bring it in against the neck. Very tempting to do more than you need to do. Because you get very excited once you've got this in your hand. You think, oh, I could do that. It's another little bit of discipline needed. Maybe a little bit down there. I didn't know that there's much more it really needs. I mean, yes, I could put white lines all over it, but you know, does it tell any more of the story? Not really. 
I think we can see what we've got here. I didn't know that I'd do more, to be honest. I think that'll do. I think that's it. All right, look, enjoy that. Ah, one thing. Here we go. One last thing. I'm going to do the eyes a little harder just before we finish because she's looking at me with very faded eyes now. The blue and the red might just give her a bit more intensity. I haven't tried to make eyeballs or pupils. I just made an almond shape and it's what I saw in the original reference I was looking at. I think that's probably better. All right. No, I think we're done. I think we're done. All right. Enjoy that. Let's just follow on from the other one for you, the Statue of Liberty. So let's see what you do. Okay.